Hello everyone. Today we're talking about the Sarah Burns subscription box, um, which I have already done an unboxing of in another video that you can go and watch. How did this new painting turn out? Stay to the end and see how I put what I learnt into practice from my first gouache tutorial and how I rated the tutorial and materials that came with the subscription box. So I've now completed the tutorial and my first gouache painting and I thought it would be fun to do a bit of a before and after and to share with you what I learnt. I'll also be able to comment more on the brushes and paints um, that came in the subscription box and also about what learning materials you get with your tutorial and so on. So I'm going to be sharing with you three paintings a before so before the tutorial, um, the painting made during the tutorial, which will be on this, which is a print of Sarah Burns' um, picture that she used in the tutorial, um, followed by a painting session where I paint another picture of my own using some of the techniques that I learnt, um, and that will give me an opportunity to talk through what was difficult, what was easy, um, and yeah, um, a little bit about the materials and so on. Let's get started. Now, first of all, to comment, this is a piece of paper given to us in the subscription box. And I have to say, a really, it's brilliant paper, I love it. Um, I've only painted, I painted, I painted two pictures on it. I used it for, um, I used it for this one to see what it was like and I thought it was great. It's got a very fine texture and it's and it's like um it's quite like a canvas texture but it's not too regular. Um although it is regular it, it sort of doesn't come over that way. Um so yeah I really liked it. I thought it was lovely. Um I haven't used hundred percent cotton, I can use a mix um that often. So this is a hundred percent cotton watercolour paper and it's great. So I'd love to know. <laughs> I'd love to know what brand it is actually, so if anyone knows what brand is used in the um, boxes um, then yeah I'd be interested to know, um, Sarah if you're listening um, and you're allowed to say, um, that would be great to know as well. <laughs> now a nice tip with masking tape, why I quite like using a patterned one but what, a pattern that really doesn't kind of shout out at you is because if it's the right sort of pattern I can make I can make my tape straight because all these little cat's noses little divide a line on its mouth I can line up um, along the edge of the paper where you can find some element in the pattern it doesn't have to be this one obviously um, that you can line up and then you can get a nice straight edge because sometimes when the tape is totally plain that might I make it rather wonky, um, although plain tape is also, I prefer the plain tape to something very busy or something highly coloured because otherwise it affects the the way in which you balance your painting or it can be very distracting while you're painting. So this is the composition I'm going to paint today. This was a watercolour of waves I did before I did the gouache tutorial. It's a composition made from a mixture of source material and my imagination. Now for this picture I've chosen to use uh, colours a bit more like my original picture. You can see um, the tutorial picture um, was much more ultramarine blue and this was much more turquoise which I kind of fancy replicating the turquoise. Um, as I say I found the sea a bit heavy there, that was um, my lack of <laughs> ability I think with the gouache. I mean it is heavier you have to get used to a different look in it. It obviously has a solidity to it, which um, watercolour doesn't. And you're seeing a lot of the paper shine through. The sort of luminosity here is due to a lot of the paper shining through. Um, whereas you don't get that with um, with gouache when you use it thickly anyway. You've obviously you've got it in the sky here. This is gouache, but used thinly. Um, and I also noticed in Sarah's original that I think the beach is much more thinly painted than I did 
mine looks a little bit heavy so um, yeah so what I decided to do is to use um, this is called primary blue it's like a cerulean I haven't looked at what the code is but it will behave like a cerulean blue which will give be able to give me the more turquoisey colors um, I think um, and I will use ultramarine as well because who doesn't love it as a color um, and I will use, so I'm using the three colors that came with the tutorial and the white and I've just added this blue in I might because I did use a lot of um, raw sienna but it was watercolor I might include that possibly if I can't recreate the browns but I should be able to do something with them so be good for my color mixing skills <laughs> One tip I would say, if you if you do do the tutorial, if you look at this picture from the, from the tutorial, there's not very much in the red range here. Um, if these are your base colours, you use almost nothing as red. The reddest thing is, of course, the... Um, or I suppose you could say the purples have some red in, and also then the beach um, has some red in the... to warm the yellow up. So my tip is don't <laughs> don't um, squeeze out too much red because you won't use very much. I will probably use more in this one because um, uh, where am I going to put this? I put it over here actually, a bit off screen. I haven't got room for the entire palette on there. Um, I will use more red in this because there's more red in. I did the rocks very brown here, so. There will be a bit more red, but there's not much in hers, so I've got a great big blob. This is my palette from yesterday. I did use the, the little see-through palette that came with a piece of paper underneath it, because my table is a totally different colour. Um, and you can see I squeezed out probably twice as much red as that, and I'm left with that much. Whereas everything else, I had to re-squeeze and re-squeeze, except for the yellow. There wasn't loads of... It really was. Yeah, a lot of... I don't think I, maybe, no, I did re-squeeze the yellow once, but it was a small amount, but um, it was sort of heavy on the, the blues and greens, um, of course. And yeah, the red is very powerful when you add it, so it sort of feels disproportionately powerful when you, um, when you add it. And once again, I should be using the brushes from, um, from the Sarah Burns subscription box. Um, so far I found them, they're very light brush actually, um, they're short which is nice because they perhaps fit in a pencil case, you probably obviously need to protect the end but they're easier to transport than a very long brush, um, they're very very light and uh, yeah I found them very nice so far, um, I haven't done much gouache painting before um, but I use them, um, well I use them now and I found them very nice to use. I actually found it very difficult to use a square brush because I, I don't really have much experience with that so I'm going to try and paint a lot of the, the rocks with the square brush to make myself do it um, and I found that really um, a tricky part. Um, sort of laying down the kind of shapes that I was expecting um, because I think I think you're meant to use it so if you use it broad you get like this whole width or more if you would squashed it out a bit. But if you want a narrower one, you kind of can use it more like that. But I'm kind of just not used to changing the angles and what you need to do. I mean, other than doing that, which get a thin line, I can, <laughs> I can cope with that. Whereas a much, I use a round brush for nearly everything. Um, but yes, I wanted a bit of experience with this. So that's really nice to have a go at. And you'll definitely want this speeded up because there's going to be a bit of thinking time where I try and remember what it is that I should do in gouache that's different from how I would attack it as with watercolour. One thing I found um, very hard um, changing from watercolour to gouache was the amount of water, you know, because water, water is very important in watercolour as well and knowing how to load your brush and how thick something needs to be and um, how much paint to mix up and so on. Um, and so I constantly found I had my brush far too wet and that the um, the mix was not really thick enough um, or I would I'd have made up a nice mix but then the brush that I used was too wet within itself and then would dilute what I'd mixed too much as I was trying to apply it so um, that takes quite a bit of adjustment 
also um, understanding um, the tone of what you've actually created. I often find that when I put it down on a piece of paper, it's not really quite what I expected. Um, I'm often having to lighten it a lot more than I'd considered. Actually, the brushes have got a lovely spring to them, um, and it's lovely mixing. Mixing um, gouache is quite different. The consistency is quite different from watercolour. Worth mentioning here too are the paints that come in the subscription box. You get a very generous uh, amount because you get a 15ml tube for each of the colours and I hardly made an impression in the tubes except perhaps the white. You use a little bit more white in gouache um, but I do believe you get uh, more white um, during the course if, you, if you're on the course longer. There is some more white um, going to be coming in one of the boxes. Um, and in terms of quality, it's Shinhan artist quality, and I found it really lovely to paint with. Well, I'm having a complete struggle with these, the whole picture really, but it's coming together in places. Um, I'm having a bit of, what do I do with the rocks moment. Um, I just walked away for a few minutes and came back and thought that didn't look quite as bad as I thought it did. So um, that's always a good thing to uh, think about. But sometimes things aren't as bad as you think, um, or perhaps a little bit of drying helps. 
anyway, I'm going to continue and uh, um, hope for the best. So just as a reminder, that was the first watercolour that I did. Um, then I did the lesson in the gouache, which was a, a different scene. Um, and learnt a few techniques about how to use gouache. And so I've ended up with this. Um, I think if I compare this, compare this to the gouache, from the tutorial I actually there's more subtlety in that strangely enough in I don't know the hills are okay in both um, but the sea I feel is area <laughs> having felt that it was very heavy this sea I've made it even heavier here um, but again that's getting used to the medium I think um, so so there they are side by side the before and after um, not exactly the same uh, composition or treatment really but a little similar <laughs> um, and yeah what did I think of the gouache well I certainly struggled an awful lot more but then that's not too surprising and this is there are a lot of things in that technique wise which are new to me and you can't expect to just paint to do what you want um, and do what's expected um, I spent a long time going over things which um, I think nearly every single thing I redid, which is lovely about gouache that you can, 
I completely redid the sky. I didn't have the splash coming as high as I originally had planned. I changed the shape of the headland. Um, I also knocked back the colour significantly. I was unhappy about how that was receding and how it linked with the foreground. Um, and it does that better now. Um, and yeah, I reconfigured the rocks a lot before I understood how to do the rocks with the square brush. Um, I don't find it as subtle as what I can achieve in watercolour, but again, that's practice. Um, and I don't know how I feel about the, you know, it is a much more solid looking um, medium. And I think that takes a bit of getting used to the look of it, but also to apply it in a way that is less solid looking, um, probably, and a little bit freer, it's a bit tight um, in places. And that's, that's my um, lesser experience. Um, in in the medium, um, I would have liked to. Th this is very bright in its colours. It's a little. I prefer things that have have got a bit more nuance and subtlety, and not so saturated. And this is a very similar saturation throughout. I wasn't really sure how to make the sea kind of recede. Uh, I probably should have had a more neutral colour up here, as dark as that, but but a more neutral, less um, less saturated in. Um, that blue and sort of knocked back a bit that maybe made it look rec recede more just at the end I put in um, some shadows beneath the waves and that helped and I just dulled down some of the very bright colour I think that's the thing I need to get more neutrals in there than I've got um, and I'm not so keen when it's all really 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 bright um, but yeah I mean it's I learned lots from the lesson and I now have a really messy palette here uh, with lots of paint still left, so I'm feeling pretty inspired, so I think I'll go off and paint another painting. Um, so this has been a really good experience, and I shall definitely carry on doing more gouache, so thank you very much, Sarah Burns. If you're interested in how to paint this watercolour version of the picture, then I have a full tutorial you can watch on that, which is yet to be edited, so click the subscribe button and you'll get notified, and if I have already edited it, it will be a link at the end of this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.